Assalamualaikum and good morning to everyone. Yeah. Okay, so as we mentioned earlier, this is um I think this is a sharing session um with you all, yeah. Uh, based on my experience and our uh, department um, on actually um, achieving this, um, I can say that this is uh, uh, among the, the, the highest award eh, in Achum. And um, this is also what I hope, yeah, my expectation uh, that you can get uh, something from our um, discussion and our sharing session today because I am not um, uh, good yeah, in teaching and learning and because I also learned and uh, still continue learning and uh, hoping uh, that uh, this webinar uh, can benefit you yeah, and also uh, perhaps you also can uh, give me um, your opinion and also uh, maybe uh, your your experience yeah in, uh, in developing your own program okay so um today i will cover um, around five main topics but uh, i think this is a very short uh, session only um so uh, first part i will uh, give some kind of introduction or overview about uh, this the negotiation negotiation uh, expectation especially in uh, teaching and learning so because uh, our program yeah before uh, i just give you an overview about our program yeah our program um basically during for this award yeah we uh use our one of our program that is a master of library and information science and this program is uh, uh, the mood is um, this is a coursework program and the students are required to have uh, to complete the 45 uh, credit hours and also including a uh, project so in developing this program, uh, we also required uh, some kind of um, uh, information and also input from our students and also alumni because they are our uh, previous students who can actually have an experience uh, learning from our uh, lecturers yeah and also attended all the classes so as we know the negotiating expectation uh, referred uh, to the process of how we setting a clear and realistic expectation so it involved the teachers students and also the stakeholders uh, in the learning process that's why when we developed the program they are the person, yeah, especially the our alumni and our stakeholders from uh, library, especially. We try to um, get yeah the expectation to our students. So, what are the what kind of uh, product yeah they they expected from the department? Because um, during yeah uh, when I develop. Uh, when I complete the uh, application form, actually, I also refer to the, because our program is actually, um, if you look at the QS uh, ranking by subject for, for this year, 2023, we are in the number 27 in the world. So, um, one of the criteria, if you look at the QS um by subject is in terms of the employability. So uh, we have to produce um, students which have, um, I can say that the marketable, something that can be marketable. The students can have ability to work, yeah? uh, especially in the library and information science. 
So in doing this, the negotiation of expectation is very important in the beginning of the development of your program. So because this is a collaborative approach in setting uh, your goals, uh, the standards, yeah, the criteria for success and also requires it required open communication, active listening, and also mutual understandings. Yeah. So by having this, actually, negotiating expectation is important in the context of uh, teaching and learning because it can lead to improve the uh, engagement, uh, our achievement, and also it will be uh, motivate our students, yeah, uh, among, among our students, because we want them to be part of uh, this um, program. We, we want them to have a kind of sense of belonging to the program. Okay, So whatever they, they for example, they want to um, do something, to achieve something, uh, they have to think that this is for the program. Okay, uh, So this is uh, the importance that um, we can actually embed in our program, okay? And then um, the negotiating uh, expectation can also help in terms of uh, promoting the community engagement, yeah, and by involving the community members in the learning process and also addressing their needs and expectation. Okay, uh, later I will discuss in detail about this, but basically, um, the we actually the department yeah and also the program have a very close relation with the community especially uh, because i'm looking for the context of community for library community we actually engage yeah with the uh, public library uh, rural library uh, school library uh, and also uh, the academic libraries so we have a very uh, close relationship with them uh, and also our department members, the lecturers and also the, some of the students are the members of um, Malaysian, uh, the PPM or Purpus, uh, the Persatuan Perpustakaan Malaysia. So that uh, from this association, actually, we create our engagement with the community. And we also have a um, kind of discussion with them, especially with their chief librarian, uh, and also to discuss about uh, the expectation about the program. So additionally, uh, negotiating expectation can contribute yeah, to the success of, uh, success of the program, of any program, yeah, such as uh, our program, the Master of Library and Information Science, uh, by promoting our student engagement, the quality of teaching, and also research excellence. So, uh, even though, yeah, it, we said about uh, today, we are focusing on teaching and learning, but I can say that uh, the uh, the successful of the uh, our program is also because of the research. Because in this uh, program, the Master of Library and Information Science, uh, our students um, uh, have to come out with a project which contribute uh, 12 credit hours. And the requirement for this project is they have to, yeah, uh, the project must uh, contribute yeah, with uh, or involve community. So, the community uh, is, is a community that related to the research work. Yeah, So this is another, uh, actually, uh, I can say that uh, uh, opportunity for our student to meet the community yeah, and also have the, that kind of uh, discussion about uh, the, the expectation. And also be, because when they want to develop the project, from the beginning, yeah, when they want to set up their project, they will ask them, they will ask the community about their needs. What is their expectation? What is their needs? So, and then the, the students will try to negotiate in terms of fulfilling the needs. Okay, this is one example, all right? So, 
then we look at the definition. I think that this is just to refresh, yeah, to refresh your uh, memory about what is the meaning of the expectation. Yeah, um, uh, expectation is as we know, this is so when you put a standard, when you put a goal, yeah, uh, so uh, on uh, on any uh, particular task or activity. So in the context of uh, teaching and learning, expectation may include uh, academic performance, the behavior, yeah, how we want them to behave, yeah, and also the effort between the students and also teachers, okay. And then on the other hand, the negotiation, is a process of discussion and reaching toward the, uh, an agreement between uh, between the teachers and the students, yeah, who have a different goals and objective. So how we can have this discussion to reach an objective? So in the context of teaching and learning, the negotiation may involve uh, findings of common understanding between you as a teachers and your students about one objective or one particular uh, expectation and also goals, okay? So, and then on the other hand, the learning environment because this expectation and negotiation is happened in the learning environment. So, when we talk about learning environment, it involves the physical and social context. So, yeah. So, this may include the factors, for example, like in the classroom design, the teaching method, what, how you interact between uh, uh, your students, yeah, between you and your students. So, because the interaction in the class also, I can say that it also gives an um, impact towards your student, especially those who have no uh, background in uh, in, in, certain, in your field. Because okay, for Masters of Library and Information Science, uh, this is, we, ca we categorize it as a first entry level. So our students are coming from uh, various multiple background. They are coming from, they are students coming from engineering, education, pharmacies, um, uh, uh, statistics, and we also have students coming from computer science. So they have different background. And of course, they have a different kind of, um, I can say uh, knowledge and also understanding about the library itself, about the information science. So by actually having a, a good interaction and create a good uh, environment with the students will make them uh, free to talk yeah, and also have an open uh, mind in terms of giving their opinion, right? Okay, so we also encourage yeah, uh, by, learn, by learning environment can have a significant impact in terms of their uh, engagement, the student engagement and also make them success. Uh, for us, yeah, uh, GOT is one of the aim, is uh, one of our aim, one of our objective. So we try uh, to have uh, GOT students from each of our uh, intake. Okay, um, if we, for example, during our, um, because for, for this program, uh, to get GOT, we, they have to complete in three semesters. And uh, based on the track record, the previous track record, we managed to get it. So we can get uh, at least two or uh, two or three students GOT in uh, uh, every semester. So uh, this is the success things that we can say that uh, this is the objective, one of the objective when we actually develop the program. Okay. Why? And then what is the benefit actually of having this negotiating expectation? And because I believe that uh, as a teachers, yeah, as a lecturers, this is the, uh, we, we, this is a, I can say that this is our commonly we commonly do that do this yeah we always negotiate with our students yeah uh, and also we also tolerate tolerate with them but in terms of uh the negotiation on what ex what we expected from them uh, these are the things that we have to look into yeah so 
the benefit of having this actually we can um, improve yeah improve the students uh, engagement so the negotiating expectation with the students can help us to increase uh, the students sense of ownership and investment uh, in the learning process so they will think they will think that okay i belongs to this program yeah they have this kind of uh, ownership and they're willing to invest invest in terms of giving their opinion so when when students have a say in setting the expectation so they are more likely to be engaged and motivated to meet those expectation okay this is what actually yeah, uh, we uh, always uh, practice yeah and encourage our team uh, to do this uh, before the class begin yeah for, uh, on the first week yeah we create um, the uh, uh, we are using dropbox drop, dropbox paper so from there we ask the students to put their expectation uh, towards our class yeah put it in the form of uh, um, the writing uh, essay writing a very short essay about what are their expectation about this program uh, this course yeah and then um, we also uh, encourage the other uh, the other uh, students to look at the others other student opinion because by using the dropbox paper we can see right at the same time concurrently about the other opinion uh, from other students so uh, from there also it will motivate yeah uh, motivate uh, the other students to work hard to do to invest to put an ownership to the program okay and then um, secondly is uh, on the benefit is on higher achievement when you actually have this kind of uh, method in teaching yeah uh, the negotiation on the expectation uh, we, you will become you will be able yeah uh, the students and teacher can set a realistic goals and provide a clear guidance on how to achieve them yeah uh, how how uh, on how uh, uh, we can help them to achieve it right so this actually uh, we we you should not be too rigid you should not be uh, too focused on our own uh, our own objective yeah be because we also need to consider it. and also this can help a students to better understand on what is expected what we expected from them and to develop the skills and knowledge that is needed to make them success okay so this kind of win-win situation uh, and also good communication uh, is can can help in terms of uh, giving a higher achievement so that's why i can say that by uh, doing this or practicing this in our program we are able to achieve this award yeah. uh, so um, and the next one is the benefit of having this negotiation expectation it can help to increase student motivation yeah uh, by giving them a sense of control uh, over their own learning Okay, because um, as a because as I mentioned earlier, our students are coming from a uh, different background, right? Uh, okay, because some of them are good in uh, mathematics, are good in statistics, because uh, they are coming from uh, engineering field, they are coming from computer science, yeah. So the way they present the output is different with student from social sciences. We also have students from the background of social science. So, uh, for example, when we give them uh, an activity in class, um, usually our activity required them to go out and to collect data, even though this is in class. Eh? So, um, when they go and do, uh, I ask them to do kind of interview, uh, to interview the reference librarian and also to observe uh their activity okay the way uh in my actually 
in in the rubric yeah? in the rubric when i give them assignment i give them the rubric okay. what i expected from them yeah in my expectation i put um okay they, you you just have to uh, for example like to give a summary of your findings in the form of uh, 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 writing or whatever okay but for the copy for the uh, social science student they will only um describe it or uh, sum, summarize their findings in the text yeah. but it's different from the students who have a background for example in uh, statistic and uh, computer science the way they present it is different they give me more than what i expected but i'm happy to that with what they give it to me and i uh, i i say that this is a even though this is not part of yeah, uh, uh, what I expected, but because of this kind of negotiation, I accept it. Yeah? And I think this is the additional work that has been uh, given to, uh, to me. But on the other hand, for the social science students, they are good in terms of writing. So when they, found, uh, when they do interview, uh, uh, they will use... Um, uh, the 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 uh, what we call it um, the team they develop the team and also they come up with the proper and also the way they describe it using the mind mapping. So the presentation is different, yeah, but it actually give uh, give me the new ideas and also it's uh, um, and it's beyond our expectation. So. We actually greeting them on what uh, we uh, celebrate on what they are doing, and um, when when they it actually um, when we ask them okay for the next assignment okay what is your expectation because this is my expectation what you can give me give more what you can give to me okay so when I open it so they feel that okay I'm part of this and they are feel motivated because. When they give uh, when they give me the first um, feedback from the first assignment, I really appreciate it. So for the next assignment, I open it because I open and I ask them about what are the things that I can include, yeah, to make um, uh, the output or uh, the the output from your from the students finding will be more interesting and useful. Yeah, that's why. Uh, some some of our project, even though that is a project paper, yeah, uh, for the uh, because they have to uh, they have to come out with the project paper. So some of the project paper, yeah, because they come out with a very good output. So uh, we also uh, together with the supervisor, they also produce a paper to submit to the journal. Uh, so this is another way we actually uh, motivate them. Yeah, because they are in the master, even though they are of uh, master level, but we encourage them to uh, do writing. Yeah, this we can see. Uh, I have few uh, students actually which uh, successfully yeah uh, publish a paper in the Scopus, and also I think for my department we only have one or two papers published in Web of Science. Then that paper is coming from uh, project people. So, but I have around five or six article yeah coming come from uh this uh, project yeah that we published in uh, scopus so i think this also can actually uh, motivate them increase their motivation okay if you have any questions uh, maybe you can ask yeah okay and then um the other thing is on the better communication. So uh, it's required a clear communication between teachers and students. Oh. You, you cannot expect that the student will understand about your, uh, your, 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 what you expected from the, uh, to, uh, from them without telling them that what you want. Yeah. So this can help the negotiation expectation requires clear communication between you and your students, which can help to build stronger relationship and improve understanding between these two groups. So this actually can create a positive and productive learning environment for everyone. So I think this is a very uh, 
uh, every ev uh, everyone of us yeah, uh, as uh, lecturers as uh, teachers we, we we apply this in our uh, in our class so this also uh, be part of yeah um uh, i can say that uh, how actually it can uh, improve yeah uh, the program itself okay and next is on it will give a greater sense of accountability so when expectations are negotiated the students are more likely to feel accountable for meeting them yeah this can help to promote a culture of uh, responsibility and accountability within the classroom which can lead to the better outcome for students and teachers alike so um the students uh, are free uh, to come and meet you and also um, uh, we can also promote uh, a culture of responsibility responsibility this is what i mentioned to you uh, we have to think uh, we have to make sure that they are belongs to our department they are belongs to this program yeah and they have to feel proud this is a uh, during yeah, uh, when we uh, every uh, for example like me myself when i start uh, in the first week of teaching i will uh, tell my students that you should be proud that you are here at university malaya and part be part of uh, a program which i uh, part of the department which is in the number uh, top 50 in the world so this actually this i blowing the trumpet because i want them to have uh, the kind of uh, uh i can say accountability and also sense of belonging yeah and uh if they have uh actually if they have a chance to talk to give an opinion yeah so they will feel that oh okay i'm part of i'm being accounted in this department so uh, this kind of actually method will make them have this greater sense of accountability okay all right so now i move to the next is on the tips for negotiating expectation uh, expectation in, in teaching and learning uh, this is just sharing yeah, what about the tips okay um i give this uh, this is the scenario but i think that um this is the common scenario uh, when the students um, uh, students are asking about um, ask you about uh, the assignment so they ask you whether you can help them and ask about uh, what is your expectation and and maybe uh, they ask you what can you help me understand what you are expected from expecting from me so as a teachers usually you will tell them of course uh, so let's do let's let's go over the assignment together so and then you explain blah and blah what is the things that they required to do yeah and then uh, for example like you tell them them your article must have a, 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 a reference you should find a, a clear uh, you should find a a sources from uh, the database yeah and then you tell them on how to organize an article right and then maybe the students again ask you uh, they are not so sure about how to get start and then you told them about okay before you get start you have to know about uh, you have to divide your work into one two and three okay so and then end up usually the students uh, some of the students which, which are smart students they will say that okay before i submit the final draft can i give you uh, can i give you the draft of that paper so that you can look look and uh, look into it and maybe give a feedback so uh, as a student as a teachers usually we say that okay this is good this is good and we could, we will provide a feedback uh, and guidance to help you but so this is the scenario of um the negotiating the negotiation uh expectation right and i think that this is uh commonly uh, happened in in our teaching uh, experience and um this kind of things yeah but not all teachers not all lecturers uh there 
to actually entertain those students uh, to help them to do this yeah uh, or maybe to discuss with them step by steps usually we say that okay uh, we just give them because you are master student why you know what to do you should know okay uh, as a master student you should understand that this kind of thing needs to do this you have to do you have you, you should have a reference and everything but this actually can make the student feel that you are not encourage them you are not actually give a, a chance to them to actually negotiate have a kind of negotiation but uh, usually because of the time constraint because we are have we, maybe we are holding any position so we have no time to do this but actually this actually this is a good things that we have to uh, apply it, yeah uh, to the students and by having this we can get all the benefits that i mentioned earlier on the other scenario uh for for our program yeah uh as i mentioned we have this uh 12 credit hours project okay before uh before this we did not practice this yeah um we actually uh we have a phase in our project so uh these are the things that i reported in my uh when i uh, actually submitted the application yeah um when when i um okay uh, before this when the students uh, registered for their title for the project yeah and then um the students are required to meet uh, the supervisor to discuss with the supervisor uh, about the project and also what they're going to do and then uh, the uh, when they do there that is a p1 and p2 during the p2 and they have to submit their their uh, project the, the report and also they have to do a poster presentation in front of the examiner and then the internal examiner so at that time we can see that the examiner give a different marks a very i can say that the the dif, uh, the difference uh, between the marks given by the examiner and also the supervisor is huge yeah? uh, the difference okay so that we got uh, when we got this feedback and we see that why this thing happened and then we found that there is yeah um there may be there is no communication between the three of them so so that we uh, actually adjust our uh, our method yeah of uh, doing this p2 by uh, the project by including when the students register the title, they have to meet between the supervisor, the examiner and the students. They have to sit together and discuss about their expectation. The supervisor, uh, the examiner, when they look at the proposal and they have to tell the students what they expect from the student, their expectation. And then there will be a negotiation. If the students can't do this, what? they have to tell the supervisor and also the students about uh, the examiner about this so by having this kind of uh by adding yeah uh, this uh, value in the uh, in the process so we can see that uh, our students are managed to produce a very good things uh because we are having this kind of discussion having this kind of negotiation between these three yeah the, uh, between these three group yeah the examiner the students and also the teachers the lecturers so i think this is the uh, good example uh, for for our program which can bring yeah um a good scenario that can actually uh, show how important uh, the uh, negotiation of expectation yeah in the program okay so um the tips for negotiation uh, negotiating expectation in teaching and learning so we have to be uh, to be clear 
as a teacher, we have to be clear about what is your expectation. Yeah, as a teacher, it is important to be clear about your expectation for the students. This includes uh, everything from ac their academic performance uh, to their behavior, in especially in the classroom. Yeah, make sure uh, to communicate your expectation in a clear and concise manner, because we know uh, for for our program, I can say that seventy percent of our students are from China. And yes, of course, we have um, uh, this kind of uh, issues or problem really uh, regarding their understanding about uh, their, their level of, I can say that their language, in terms of language. Yeah? So they are having this kind, this problem. So, uh, but we have to actually uh, discuss with them about our expectation in the clear manner, what we expected from them. Okay, for example, um, yesterday, one of my students asked me, do I need to submit all the activities that you give me in class? Because there's no mark for it. And I said, because this is, I, as I mentioned, I actually told them earlier, every activity that I give it in class, even though there is no marks, but it will be used. Yeah, when we as a teachers, when uh, at, at the end when we calculate the total marks, for example, to give them a bonus mark on their effort. Yeah, we will look at this, uh, their their performance when, for example, in performance in class and also uh, their contribution in submitting their activity in class. So. This have to be uh, mentioned earlier so that the students, this will encourage them uh, to actually to do uh, the task that we give it to them. And then the second one involves students in setting expectation. So students are more likely to take uh, ownership on their learning uh, if they are uh, involved in setting expectation. So encourage students uh, to share their own expectation for the course and work together to create a set of shared expectation. It actually can uh, give them an opportunity uh, to be part of us. But for us, we are use we use our alumni. Yeah, we use our alumni which our uh, students also, and some of them are uh, coming from industry. They are our students, but now they are working in the industry, and then they will, they are part of our uh, contributor in terms of giving an opinion, especially when we do the curriculum review. Okay, so um, the, the their opinion is very important for us in terms of uh, improving our uh, our actually the objective, yeah, our, our method of teaching, and our what are the the we can say that uh, the things that we need to improve, right? And then you have to be flexible. Yeah, while it is important to have a clear expectation, it is also important to be flexible. Every student is unique and may have different needs or circumstances uh, that. Um, impact their ability uh, to meet certain expectation. So you have to be willing to make adjustment when it is necessary. Uh, this is the things that I mentioned earlier. Uh, when I we have a, our department is unique, our program is unique because uh, students are coming from different background. So they will, they will actually implement what they have learned during their undergraduate studies. So that's why those who are good in uh, from engineering, from statistic, yeah, the way they present their 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 output is different. They are, they love to use all to, all the tools, the visualization tools, uh, to show it, uh, uh, and to show it to, to the class and also do the presentation. And when they do a slide presentation, uh, the slide, yeah, the way they present their output is also different. They love to use all the visualization tools, yeah, when they want to present the data. So this is a good thing, yeah. And we, as the teachers, we appreciate, yeah, and we are very flexible in terms of um, uh, accepting uh, the the difference, yeah. 
and then um, next is the uh, provide the feedback so um, regular feedback is essential for helping students meet expectation so we provide feedback uh, that is specific uh, constructive and also which can be actionable so this will help students understand where they need to improve that's why for us yeah uh, we encourage our team uh, to give um to discuss about uh, every time they submit their assignment and then uh, when they submit it and then when we receive it within one one week we have to discuss yeah in general about uh, uh, your feedbacks towards the uh, uh, the uh, the uh, uh, assignment that the actually submitted to us so that from the first assignment they will learn okay for example uh, in your assignment what i expected from you when you submit assignment you need to have a cover page a table of content a reference a citation a proper citation and everything so when i give them this feedback for the next assignment they know what they have to improve so this is a simple example okay and then next, we have to celebrate uh, the success, yeah? celebrate when students meet or exceed the expectation. This reinforce a positive behavior and encourage the continued success. And for those who have not achieved, yeah, usually we will try yeah, uh, to uh, put them in the same group yeah, or put them in the group of students who are success and then they will learn from them uh, because we know that not all uh, students in our class have an ability or capability to, to give us more than what we expected from them, right? Okay, but of course there is a challenges in doing this First one is uh, misunderstanding. Yeah, um, this can be arise when your expectations are not very clear, uh, not clear and not uh, properly defined, or you have not properly communicate to the students. Sometimes you expect that okay, this is not your first semester. What this is your second semester. This is your third semester. You should know this. Yeah, we sometimes we uh, overthink. We we think that they know yeah this can lead to uh, confusion and also frustration from both uh, teachers and also from students and up we can see uh, we can get very low mark in our c test right uh, this is the outcome and then resistance to change yeah student may resist uh, negotiation negotiating expectation if they are used to a certain way of doing something yeah, or if they are not used to being involved in the process. So teachers may also resist, resist change if they are used to a certain teaching style. Okay, this is my style. I don't want to change. Uh, this is my way of teaching. No, before this, nobody said that this is, uh, they, they, they accept my teaching style. Why? Now you say that you, I have to change it. So, or if they feel that their authority is being challenged. I am a teacher, so nobody can challenge me. So this kind of resistance, yeah, attitude, this kind of attitude actually, resistance to change uh, can actually, um, I can say that unable you to success, yeah, to give, uh, to get a uh, benefit from the negotiation of uh, expectation. So, and uh, this usually happen uh, in, uh, I believe you also have a kind of this kind of experience when you actually supervise the PhD students. Uh, some of them uh, they don't want to change, even though we say that okay, I think you need to be more flexible. I think you have to change your domain to do instead of doing this. You have to, but there are students say very resistance and say they, they want to change. They still want to follow. End up they have to do PD three and four times three or four times okay and then the next one is power dynamics is, uh, can come into a play uh, during the negotiation process yeah particularly if there is a significant power if you have a power and this significant power is imbalance between the teachers and students so they can this can make it difficult for students to feel comfortable in sharing their thought and opinion yeah so 
and uh, this kind of things is also uh, because you are using your power so people uh, the students might have uh, a gap yeah this can, can create a gap between you and your students next is a time constraint uh, negotiate negotiating expectation take times uh, just now i show you the scenario right uh, it required you to spend half an hour just to talk about to discuss with them about your expectation so uh teacher may feel that uh as a as a, le le a lecturer so you might feel that they don't uh i don't have time uh, i don't have enough time to engage with this process and some of the students also feel the same things they also have uh, feel they feel pressured yeah, to meet the deadlines and may not feel that they have a time to engage in negotiation so uh, because of the time constraint as a reason uh, this can also uh, lead uh, to the students uh, drag their uh, time to actually to graduate and also uh, 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 yeah enable them to graduate on time and also sometimes uh, drag their duration of uh, um, study okay and lastly is unrealistic expectation sometimes expectation may be unrealistic yeah uh, you are all overly ambitious uh, which can lead to frustration and disappointment from both party so you have to be realistic don't be don't make it uh, your expectation too high towards your student you you must understand the background of the students you must understand that uh, their ability yeah, not all students, as I mentioned, not all students are able to uh, get a very good and higher marks. Okay, and then okay, now I actually, or actually I have shared some of my experience, um, our department experience, yeah, uh, in this negotiating expectation. But if we look from the context of the program, negotiating expectation in the mlis program itself this program yeah often involve a collaborative project and assignment yeah? most of our assignment uh and also project for example we we have a project with adult uh, elderly uh elderly people from the elderly home and also we we have also a project with the uh, uh with this uh community um uh, with the school library and also with the uh, rural library and now i encourage students from china to have this also uh, uh, interview and also project with the library uh, in china and uh, last semester they presented a very i think interesting findings uh, about uh, the um, uh, how the elderly people in china actually helping the library in term of um uh, to make in term of collecting and uh, to develop their collection so uh, this uh, because by having this uh, collaborative project and assignment we actually negotiating acceptation can help uh, be helpful in ensuring that all teams members are clear on what is expected so when they do a project for example when they do a project they have to meet the community so uh, this is the requirement eh? when they meet a community and then uh, they have to ask about can you tell me what is your needs okay this is my topic what is your needs what is your expectation so uh, the community will give a feedback and the student will try yeah to map with their uh, with the objective okay so at the end of the project Again, they will distribute the questionnaire whether they are able to achieve what the community expected from them. Okay, so these are the, the elements that we uh, embed in our project. So this the collaborative work is one of the uh, uh, negotiating expectation in our program. The next one is user expectation. So libraries and information center are often driven by the user expectation. Uh, this is because we are from library science program, right? So by negotiating expectation with user, this is what we tell our students. Uh, in library, you still need to 
uh, negotiate with the user. An information professional can ensure that they are meeting their needs and providing the quality service. So the user expectation is very important. So for MLIS program, yeah, when they do the negotiating expectation, it actually can help in terms of professional development. So negotiating expectation with, uh, with supervisor and also the colleague can be useful tool for their professional development. Okay, so they will have this kind of culture. When they go to works, they will say that, oh, this is what, I, what I've been uh, used when, I, uh, uh, when I'm doing my master program. We always have this kind of negotiation between me and also my supervisor. So it can help information professional to set goals and expectations for their own performance later on, as well as for their performance of others. So this can give uh, the good output. Yeah, and this is what the program can actually ensure. Yeah, we can give to the students. And lastly, on the diversity and inclusion, so negotiating expectation can also important in promoting diversity and inclusion. Uh, so by involving uh, student and community members in setting the expectation. So information uh, professional can also uh, ensure that their services and resources are meeting the needs. Uh, of a diverse uh, population yeah, of the community. All right. So in terms of uh, method uh, of teaching in MLIS program, uh, we always encourage an active learning. So uh, negotiating expectation can be valuable in terms of promoting active, le active learning in our program. We involve our students in expectation, uh, instructor and promote engagement. And then we also encourage the um, inquiry-based learning. Yeah? Uh, so this is very common method. And I believe that uh, the other instructor, the other lecturers also uh, doing the same thing. And we also flexible yeah, in terms of uh, uh, promoting, we promote the flexibility in the method of teaching. We are being open uh, to negotiating and collaboration uh, with students. Especially uh, because when we talk about open, our of course our program uh, support fully support the open science movement. So we in open science movement, we actually uh, uh, encourage students to have this uh, open access, open uh, open data, and also. We try, yeah, because in our op in open science there is a citizen science element. We actually try to embed the citizen science element in our uh, project, in your students' project, so so that we actually can uh, we can actually encourage them uh, uh, to uh, actually to make the citizens become a scientist. Okay. So, um, and this kind of flexibility yeah, between the student instructor can adapt their teaching method to meet the needs and preferences uh, of their learn learners, right? And then professional development is what I mentioned earlier. By having this, it can actually, uh, by setting expectation for their own learning and development, students can take active role in shaping their future career. So this is for actually for the, uh, for for the, the benefit of the students later on when they go to the uh, field work, okay? And um, the, our program, as I uh, mentioned a few times, right, is closely related uh, to the community. Okay, all the project is based on this. So the community engagement, because it is one of the requirement, yeah? Uh, uh, is uh, based on the partnership building. The partnership building here means that negotiating expectation can help information professional uh, to build a strong partnership with the community uh, members and also organization. So uh, by involving the community members uh, in setting expectation, information professional can demonstrate uh, their commitments uh, to work collaboratively with the community and to meet uh, with the, what are the, with to meet their needs, okay, 
and then the needs of assessment is where uh, is it, it is uh, this negotiation of uh, expectation yeah, can be useful tools in conducting the need assessment for the community. So because of that, uh, as I mentioned, every student when they do a project, they need to have uh, to to collect the need assessment because uh, from the need assessment actually uh, it will set help help them in setting the expectation. Yeah, information professional can gain in better understanding of their needs and expectation that can tailor uh, their services and also uh, resources accordingly. Okay. Next is on the trust building. Uh, by using the negotiation of expectation, yeah, it will help the trust between the uh, the information professional, the students who become the information professional, and also the community members. So this uh, involves the community members in setting expectation. The information professional can demonstrate their willingness, uh, yeah, because the willingness to um, to listen, uh, to address to their concern, to their community concern, and to create a more positive and productive relationship with this community. So trust building is very important. So uh, by having the project, actually, when they have a good communication with the community, they actually build up the trust. Okay. And lastly is sustainability. Uh, this can also important for the long term. Yeah. Uh, sustainability, sustainability uh, of community engagement initiative. So what we expected eh, when we have a uh, good communication, good collaboration department, eh, our department actually, as I mentioned earlier, we have a very close relationship with uh, library in Malaysia and also uh, uh, some of the uh, the the approved school in Malaysia because we have project with them. For example, like with MAB Library, the Malaysian Association for Blind, we have a very good relationship with MAB Library because we set up, we'll help them to set up their libraries and we also uh, use our students yeah, to do a project there. In uh, our student, help them to develop their system using Koha. Yeah, Koha library system. And at the same time, our students are also do the project in terms of indexing and abstracting and also do a project on cataloging. So we until now, we still have this kind of engagement with the MAB library. Uh, so we can see that this is a sustainability uh, uh, engagement. And because we continue to serve them and if they have an issues, uh, or any things that we can help them. And we also actually uh, help in terms of developing their uh, policy. Okay, so these are some examples. And as I mentioned, we are um, in the world, we are now in the number 27. So by looking at this QS ranking, yeah, um, here are some ways in which it can be related to the program achievement. When we have this kind, when we implemented this in our uh, in our teaching, yeah. So first one is on student engagement. Negotiation expectation can help to promote student engagement in the MLIS. MLIS program. So engaged students are more likely to be motivated and perform well in their studies which can contribute to the program high ranking because of this student engagement. And the students uh, are actually willing to, for example, to write a paper, even though they are master students and they do a project, but they, but they try. yeah. And we also encourage them. And then the next one is a quality of teaching. Okay, uh, negotiating expectation can also contribute to the quality of teaching and the MLIS program. So by involving students in setting expectation, instructor can better understanding their needs and expectation and can tailor their teaching method and approach. Okay, for your information, every uh, when we do expectation and then at the end of class, when we actually uh, compile yeah, the student uh, feedback, uh, usually we do this at the uh, week weeks 13 and week 14. So the student feedback actually uh, can be our um, 
Actually, we will record it and we will put it in our form BR007. So, we also, uh, uh, what feedback from the students is actually the things that we will, we need to improve in our next session. Uh, so, this is another way we actually engage, well, we actually uh, include uh, the feedback from the students in, in order to actually uh, improve or actually uh, modify our expectations for the next session. Okay. So, this actually can help our quality of teaching also. Right. And next is on the uh, community engagement. As mentioned earlier, negotiating expectation can also be important for community engagement. Uh, this I've been uh, explaining it uh, clearly before. And it's also uh, give, uh, I can say that uh, it can inject also eh, our uh, program to be uh, in the high ranking, eh, in the high ranking uh, because uh, of this strong uh, engagement, not actually we are now looking uh, when we expand our community engagement with China and also one of our students, they do with the Nigerian uh, society, Nigerian community. So this actually, we expand it to the international level. And then uh, research excellence, negotiating expectation can also contribute to the research excellence in MLIS. So uh, of course, uh, research is one of the requirement when they want to evaluate our program, when they want to evaluate uh, our department uh, to be uh, listed yeah, in the QS ranking. So by involving student and community members in setting the expectation and research for research, information professional can ensure that their research is relevant and meaningful uh, to the community they serve. Okay. So I think this is the last, uh, the last slide here yeah, uh, about the, about our uh, the sharing about our achum on what we have done when we uh, apply this. Yeah, our dean asked the department uh, to submit the application, and um, I think that uh, when I want to submit, I I actually think that okay, do I have a chance? And when I look at the performance. When I look at the department itself, when I look at where are we in the world ranking, so I think that we have this opportunity, we have this chance, chance actually to win. So, so I think that why not? So I start by creating a team which involve our department members. So I just select uh, three or four team mem team members to be part of it, and then I think that. Uh, when you want to write this, when you submit the application, you have to start by writing a very attractive introduction. You have to uh, show, yeah, to blow your trumpet, to show what are the, uh, what are your strengths, what are the things that make you different from other programs. Yeah? And when doing this, I refer to the P to do to do the to the PLO and to the CLO, and also look at the previous achievement. Yeah, and as a reference, I'm using PISA document and the curriculum review report as a main sources, because from there I can get an ideas about uh uh in. Uh, because we know about the, the teaching technique method and so on, but in terms of facilities, in terms of uh, what are the infrastructure and so on, we sometimes we also need uh, kind of input from the other documents. So I'm using this document as my reference. And of course, I mentioned earlier, I, I, we tried to show our strength and what are the opportunities that we have. Uh, we try to focus on our strength, uh, national and also international level, and we also show about our the the, the our product, uh, uh, how and in term of the the employability of our product, and we also use our QS ranking by subject, yeah, the criteria because uh, as you know, 
uh, QS ranking have their own criteria. So I'm using this criteria in my uh, the way uh, in my writing and also uh, in uh, preparing the abstract of the uh, for the anugra. Okay, so I think that's all uh, from me that I can share with you. Okay, so over to you. Uh, or should I handle for the Q&A session? Because we uh, don't have moderator today. Yeah, it, uh, <coughs> do you, if anyone have any question, maybe you can unmute yourself and just um, throw your question. Anyone with any queries? Assalamualaikum. Uh, this is Wan Sarina daripada Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences. Uh, thank you, Dr. Okay. Yanti, for the sharing <coughs> just now. Um, yeah. um, I just want to ask, kan, uh, it has been our practice, I think, for most of us, uh, bila yeah. first week of uh, the, the semester, kan, uh, mm -hmm. we would go through the pro forma with the mm -hmm. students, uh, whereby we would actually go through the CLOs, kan, whereby the CLO mm -hmm. would would actually state the expectation yeah, at the end of the semester, would mm -hmm. expect the students to achieve this, that and what not. Can. And yeah. um, um, I think that is the first step that I think would actually help uh, to actually build the expectation um, in the part of the students. And mm -hmm. the thing is, I also actually share um, the tutorial questions in the first week as well. So to, mm. to, just get to show them that these are the things that you would be asked about. So yes. they, the first week, do they all know what kind of questions, what kind of yeah. issues yeah. or challenges uh, that they need mm -hmm. to address. Yeah? So mm -hmm. that is one thing. Uh, but mm -hmm. with regard to being flexible, yeah, sometimes mm -hmm. I'm, I'm talking about undergraduate punya course. Lah. Being flexible ni can, sometimes quite difficult yeah, mm -hmm. uh, for undergraduate course, especially I think because um, the students for undergraduate, they all, I think they all take a lot of courses and mm -hmm. to for them to be, to, to spend time. I have students that yang would come to me and ask this and that, tapi tak ramai lah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And for them to actually um, be involved in, in and, and tak ramai yang akan actually come with the first draft to, for, 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 for lecturers to go through and what not yeah. lah. I think yeah, for master's yeah. student that is possible, but for undergraduate yeah, student, mm -hmm. it's quite it's quite difficult. Or it's actually there's a challenge there for us to encourage them to come up with first draft, for example, for their assignment yeah, and yeah, what not. Yeah. Okay? Yeah, um, uh -huh. so I think this is the concern for undergraduate students, lah. Um, so yes. how do you actually address this challenge with undergraduate students? Because kalau kita compare the older master students, kan, the subjects mm -hmm. that they take, mm -hmm. uh, much much more, banyak lagi, yeah, kan? Yeah. Uh, yes, yes, yes. How, how do we address this with undergraduate students? Okay, actually, our we our program and eh, our department we don't have undergraduate students, unfortunately. So, um, but I think yeah, uh, because you said that you still have a numbers of students, maybe not so many, yeah, but not all. But still, there is a few students who actually come and see you. I think these small numbers of students can also give an input. Yeah, uh, because I said, uh, as I mentioned, uh, yes, we do it at the uh, during the first uh, first week, right? But at the end, week fourteen, we also encourage them to give their feedback. Okay, because uh, the expectation uh, maybe uh, you can give earlier, and then at the end you get uh, feedback from the students because maybe you you have made some adjustment and everything uh, from the expectation. So I think yeah, uh, from the small numbers that input can also benefit you. Yeah, uh, not all similar like us, not all students actually give us a feedback, only few of them. But we we put it, we take it. Yeah, and as I mentioned, we take it and we put it in the uh, BR007. When we do analysis, we see that, okay, uh, this thing needs to be improved. Right, we can see that we. That's why uh, when we do this, we we didn't ask them about. Uh, for example, yeah, uh, usually student ni dia uh, low marks in uh, doing the uh, test. Yeah, so uh, I ask the students why 
yeah, they have a, they got a low marks and the students give me an input. So usually they have no time to study and everything so that this kind of uh, actually feedback from the students, I put it in the BR007 on how to improve it yeah, for the next semester. And usually, uh, based on my experience, lah, when I put it, so I do it in the next semester, I can see the improvement. Uh, this is what are the things that actually can help us uh, uh, from the, uh, the expectation and negotiation with the students. Uh, I know the undergraduate students, they have a lot of subjects to register, to take, yeah? And also, you also have a lot of students in your class, but uh, this is my opinion. I don't know whether I answer your questions or not. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, with regard to BR007, I mean, personally, mm -hmm. yeah, memang mm -hmm. at the end of the semester, we have to fill it and then we have to basically... Mm -hmm basically mm -hmm. look at what we need to do in the mm -hmm. next academic session and mm -hmm. whatnot. Yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, but personally, for me lah, I mean, uh, I, I sometimes I actually uh, terlupa about the BR07 in the next academic uh. session to to actually uh, carry out okay. the improvement planning semua tu kan uh, um, uh, uh, and then in the uh, and then sometimes too that is i think i think not just me i think ada quite a number of lecturers uh, who actually do not really refer to BR07 for the next academic session uh, the reason uh, being i think we have so many other things sometimes kita terlupa pasal BR07 tu and we uh, tend to just take to whatever existing documents that we have mm -hmm. and we follow that year in, year out to me lah. Uh, mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's my bet, I think. But yeah, I, I will, I, I suppose uh, I need to be uh, conscious about that and, and actually um, try to, to, to do that uh, in the future. Thank you. Okay, welcome. Any other question from the floor? <coughs> um, hi. Um, hi. Uh, I'm a, a new language teacher from FBL. And mm -hmm. I just, uh, because I, I think you, uh, so first of all, thank you, Dr. Yatin, for the for this uh, presentation. I think it's very helpful for a new, a new educator to uh, learn about these things. At the beginning, okay. uh, but I just want to. I think you have touched on quite a few uh, aspects of what I'm going to ask. But I'm just curious to, if you have any further further thoughts on uh, helping students manage their motivation, because I feel like um, sometimes, uh, and also because you know, especially undergraduate students, they have a lot of different subjects. So sometimes they not just motivation, but also multiple interests uh mm. so different interests and also it, it's not just different uh, interests in different subjects but also perhaps uh for example students uh doing their thesis or something like that and they have they have different a lot of different ideas or mm. uh or they struggle to to be motivated so i i wonder if you have any further thoughts on on, on that yeah okay yeah <laughs> okay for undergraduate students yeah um uh, because yeah, I agree. Because even for for master student now, we have around uh, in my class, I have uh, thirty student, uh, twenty five students. So I know for undergraduate student, you have more than that, yeah. And uh, some of them is very, I uh, can say, in your class, maybe you have a uh, student we have which have a very, uh, 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 maybe I uh, can say, enthusiastic, and also we have a very uh, highly motivated, and some of them very low. Uh, motivation yeah uh, but uh, this these are the things that i uh, i always yeah when i start my class i always observe yeah observe my students the character because as i mentioned uh, what are the difference between uh, your your uh, the challenge between undergraduate and us is for us we are uh, actually uh, the background of our students are uh, coming from multiple background is also a uh, challenges mm -hmm. for us because um, some of them uh, if they are coming from uh, uh, from the similar for example from library and information science and I ca we can see the level of understandings but for those who are coming from uh, pharmacies from uh, from uh, networking so they have a different kind of understandings and 
perhaps students from uh, from Islamic uh, Islamic knowledge and so on, uh, they also have a different kind of thing. So the level of motivation is also different. Uh, so uh, what I can do is for our class, yeah, um, I don't know because for, for maybe this is not uh, can be done in uh, in uh, undergraduate students. But for us, uh, what I can do is actually I select in my class. Usually, I have uh, three or four, three students, three or four students who actually are professional, yeah, who actually have a background in library science. So when they have this kind a uh, uh, group assignment, because I I always uh, have uh, encourage my student to have this kind of activity in class in group. So when they uh they are in group so one of the uh, uh those who have experience in library information science they will be part of the group so they cannot be in in one group so they have be separate and uh lead in different group so that from there they will help even if we have a whatsapp group right i think you also have a whatsapp group in in that whatsapp group i always encourage uh, this, uh, those who have a uh, background, to actually um, uh, explain to the to other to the other students and also uh, help them because peer to peers, I think uh, motivation is good, yeah? Uh, yeah, rather than us. So I think this is another way uh, of actually uh, uh, helping our students. And um, because I am also a head of department, for those students who have a very low motivation, I always encourage them uh, to come and see me. Yeah, and yeah. actually, I I also receive a lot of um, a few few cases yeah, related to this, and they feel that they can't uh, actually because for master we have to get three point zero right, and some of the students. Now the 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 CDPA is below three, so they are they actually they quite worried if they can't uh, uh, get their certificate or their master certificate. So uh, they required uh, a kind of motivation. So I think as a teacher, yeah, um, I I don't know for 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 the undergraduate, uh, uh, what are the whether you have a, a group. For example, because one subject, maybe you have a group of lecturers, yeah? not only for one subject, maybe you have two or three lecturers who are working together or teaching together uh, to teach. So maybe you can have this kind of discussion uh, together uh, with your students yeah, and have a session uh, uh, with the students uh, to know about uh, Maybe those who have uh, low motivation to see, uh, to welcome them to see and uh, to see you and your team. Okay, I would like to say thank you to Edek <laughs> for uh, inviting me to give uh, to share our uh, experience. Yeah, and I hope that uh, this uh, sharing session uh, can uh, actually uh, yeah, benefited all of you. So ho hopefully lah, ada yang menang lah for the next. Achum for 2020, uh, 2023. Uh, okay. Allah.